Do you need some new watercolor ideas that are fun, relaxing, and also a little bit fierce? Well, today we're gonna go wild with some super fun and easy watercolor animal patterns. You only need three paint colors for this one, and I'll include a list of all my materials in the description below, as well as some possible paint substitutes if you don't have those exact colors. Let's get started. My three colors today are Daniel Smith Indigo, Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna, and Holbein Yellow Ochre. To start out, I've used artist tape to divide my paper into three equal sections. The paper I'm using for this project is Arch's 140 pound cold pressed. It's a four by 10 inch oblong block, so it can be easily divided into nice small little squares. I'm using just two brushes today, a silver black velvet size eight round brush, and my handmade Lebenzen bamboo handles, small stiff white synthetic brush. Start by mixing up some yellow ochre on your palette, adding plenty of water so that it is a tinted mixture, more water than pigment. Our first animal is the giraffe, and we need to start with the lightest color and value, which in this case is the tan color that separates the large spots. Paint this tinted wash directly onto your paper, wet on dry. You'll want to scrub the color on quickly and evenly using your larger brush. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember that we're going over it again later with the brown spots. So if it's a little bit uneven, that's totally okay. While that dries, we can start the zebra. Once again, mix up a very lightly tinted wash of your yellow ochre with even more water mixed in so it just looks off-white when you paint it into your square. Apply the tint wet and dry just like you did with the first layer of the giraffe. While that square dries, we can paint the first layer of our jaguar. Using yellow ochre once again, this time, dip your wet brush directly into the paint and grab a generous amount of pigment. Mix in some water together with the paint on your palette but you want it to be a much richer color, almost an even mix between pigment and water. Paint this deep yellow ochre color directly onto your dry paper. Wet on dry like this works great for quick base layers because it dries much faster than wet on wet and you can actually get right into the next layers without having to wait very long in between. So by now the giraffe square should be dry and you can begin painting the spots. Stick with your size eight round brush for these. Dip your damp brush directly into the burnt sienna and swirl a generous amount of paint around on your brush. You want your brush to be fully loaded with the damp paint. Mix in a little bit of water, just enough to get the paint flowing for you. Start to draw on the spots one by one using your brown paint and fill them in with a solid wash of burnt sienna. Work just one spot at a time rather than drawing on all the spots and then filling them in because doing one at a time will actually prevent any outlines from forming and drying around the edges of the spots. Also, try to mix up the shapes of the spots so that they're all different, but do leave an even amount of space in between the spots. It should almost look like the cracked, dry desert ground or a bunch of little islands separated by white canals. Generally, the spots on a giraffe are not rounded, but rather pointed with hard, uneven edges. It's so much fun painting them on, almost like you're putting together a puzzle. I do use a reference photo for this, but I'm not overly concerned with following it perfectly. Now once that first layer of spots is finished, I mix up a darker brown by combining a hint of my indigo with the burnt sienna. You can use this darker brown to fill in the center of the spots, leaving the edges still lighter in color. I think this little detail adds a more realistic complexity to the spots. For the zebra stripes, you'll probably feel more confident with your paint if you do a drawing first. So lightly sketch on some stripes. Be sure to include at least one stripe that has a fork in the middle, as this is a distinctive and quite common characteristic of zebra stripes. Switch to your smaller detail brush. I'm using my favorite Lebenzen Small Stiff White Synthetic Brush for these details. To mix up black, I'm using mostly indigo, but you can add in a little bit of burnt sienna to help the indigo look less blue. Using the darkest paint you can mix, start to carefully paint on your stripes. I like to work top to bottom, being careful to make the edges nice and clean. Now in case you're wondering why not just use black paint, you definitely could. I just prefer the look of a black that has subtle hints of warm and cool mixed in. Using a combination of brown and blue will create a black that has more depth and a beautiful subtle color temperature shift. For more about black and watercolor, check out this video. Moving on to the Jaguar, 
With the yellow ochre base wash dry, it still looks a little bit too flat and light in value to me. So to give it some more detail and to darken up the base wash, you can simply mix up some more yellow ochre, perhaps even with a little hint of burnt sienna mixed in, and paint on some blobs where you plan on painting the spot clusters. Don't worry if it looks a little ugly at this stage. Gently soften the edges around your blobs using a tinted, damp brush. Having too much water in your brush can cause problems, so just make sure you're controlling how wet your brush is by blotting frequently on a towel. Let this layer dry completely before painting the spots. Once it is dry, mix up your black again using indigo and a little bit of burnt sienna. You'll want to use your detail brush again for the spots. Jaguar spots almost remind me of flowers. In fact, they are actually called rosettes. They are bumpy black circles that look like rose flower petals surrounding a few smaller spots and are generally clusters of shapes rather than individual spots like you would see on a cheetah. To make them look more realistic, you can gently pull some of the paint out of each wet black shape, forming fur details around the edges of the spots. Make sure you're using a brush that can come to a tiny enough point for these details. Remember that in nature, no two spots are identical, so mix up the shapes, but try to space them fairly evenly throughout the square. You can also include a few spots that are cut off or incomplete around the edges of your composition. Rinse your brushes, and then the last detail will be to add pops of yellow ochre for each painting. For the giraffe, I felt like the white negative space between the spots was just too white, so I darkened those areas with the yellow ochre. I added more pops of yellow ochre to the middle of each rosette on the jaguar and some more fur texture between the spots. And then finally, I added a very light wash of yellow ochre to the upper and lower portions of white between the stripes on the zebra. Remove the tape to reveal your perfect clean edges. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here. Check out these other watercolor tutorials for beginners and I'll see you there.